So now we've just had the cutscene, and we've seen that you now have a new objective where you have to go back and get Burke's eye. Backtracking. Backtracking. It's something we really, really wanted to avoid, but we did want to kind of have this cool element where you couldn't get in, and we had a reason for it. We, we couldn't let you follow them immediately. Yeah, we needed to make it so that Burke... Uh, flees the scene of the crime so to speak so when you go down you don't actually get to meet bob page because he's he's gone and you won't meet um gary, gary savage because no gary, yeah yeah yes, it was you gary you can't meet gary because he's left exactly and uh, we had to get burke out of there and we had to give them time yes. so that forced <laughs> us to send you back to the base to retrieve the only key that will let you in um, but we did want to make it initially a lot shorter of a backtrack. Yeah. We actually wanted to find a way that we could uh, connect the morgue almost more quickly to Quinn. Vents aren't that long, you guys. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we couldn't do that. So instead what we had to do is we had to then take uh, the time to make it that when you get into the base... We had to create new enemy setups yeah. surrounding the objectives. So basically, there's just we did very small tweaks to the patrols depending on how you had uh, acted in the prior area. So just a little bit of variation to the whole formula. But we do apologize for the backtracking. Yeah, backtracking is... It kind of sucks. It's stinky. <laughs> Granted. Activating security scan. Signage. Uh, in every game, you always have like those error arrows with, with directions say uh, you have the command room there so that the player can orient himself. Uh, in the DS6 world and with our art direction uh, we already have a tons of numbers and decals all over the place in the walls like you see on the doors there are four there. The problem we had is when we have actual actually important signage for you guys just you need to get this way to get to your ne next objective well it's hard for us to make it meaningful, to make it stand out from the other seniors. So we're ending up uh, re using those glowy signs, hoping that you... Well, during playtests, they work that way. Uh, people tend to look at them a bit more. Uh, and it's really... I guess it would never be done that way in a base, really. But there's so much noise with this signage all over the place that there's, it's the only way we have of talking to you. But it ended up working really well in the playtest. People could find their way before. Yeah. And and before we put it in, they just were totally lost yeah. in the base. I'm still lost in the base. You're always lost. Yeah. Assets. I don't envy Commander Geithner just to deal with this crap daily. Keep it down. Jesus. I know we saw him go to the detention block, but who's to say he has to bug the hall outside his office or something? Being paranoid. Besides, what would he do? Geithner still runs this base, and she has our backs.
here? Come out now. So here you are standing inside Burke's office, the villain of the game, and uh, there's an awful lot of stuff going on inside this office that relates to Burke and relates to a bunch of stuff that's going on later in the game with consequences. Um, so for instance, we have some new secret stashes that are here. Secret stashes. Indeed. Uh, uh, one of the things we, uh, we tried that we didn't have time to actually play with in uh, Human Revolution is uh, the consequence of finding or uh, gathering information from a, a boss fight or from a very, very important uh, villain character. And actually, depending on what you do with that information and those items, to, uh, that it would affect the confrontation later. Uh, so for the missing link, we tried that. And one of the things that, that was brought up really uh, early on by the, uh, the level designers to make some kind of a safe, but a secret safe. And so we really went uh, with that idea that it's actually so hidden that you need to find a button for it and you can completely bypass it and it's not going to affect the game, but it would change a bit of your gameplay uh, at the final confrontation. And what we did is Berg's got a very special weapon. It's a golden revolver and their story... Uh, you can actually read about it in the emails uh, that are on his exactly. computer. There's emails and there's a description that tells you a little bit uh, more about where it comes from and why it's there. So if the player takes it, then Berg doesn't have it later. But if he, you don't take it, then uh, the Berg uses it against you later. So it's a very interesting twist uh, that happened that we tried and then it was very popular. Um, yeah. Another funny thing is if you look under the desk, that's where the button is. I'm just going to tell you guys. But um, a funny story about that button is the button is actually our debug button that we've used throughout oh, yeah. the game <laughs> that none of you guys should really be seeing. But we didn't have a button at the time, so we were like, we got to put a button, and we don't have enough time to make one. So we just put, put the, the debug button, button, and it worked. So. And there's something else in this room, too. You can probably notice uh, there is a picture of a guy on the wall. It's actually the art director, JJB, uh, Jonathan Jacques Beltait, who he actually painted all of those things, and he placed his own picture there. And he really wanted it to be only a placeholder, and he wanted us to replace it at some point. But we were kind of lazy, so it never happened. So his, photo, <laughs> his picture is there. And that's probably our fault. <laughs> Gardner. I've got the eye, but it's not going to fool a retinal scanner unless it's attached to an optic nerve. I know that, Jensen. I do have a plan. Take the eye down to Quinn. He'll know what to do. Keitner out. Here we are standing inside uh, Natanya Keitner's office, our uh, secret helper in the base. Um, and one of the things that we do from a story standpoint is we really build these immense backstories for our characters. And then we can use, a lot of times that backstory never gets revealed directly in the game. And a lot of times um, people won't understand it, but we can use a lot of that for fuel, for the art, for the creation. And uh, Natanya's backstory was created by one of the narrative 
designers Bruce Kelly, and he had created this whole story about her and her twin brother who died when she was 13. So if you look very closely on the desk, you'll see some pictures that are supposed to be of her and her twin brother when they were young. And some of the, and I think, uh, as a matter of fact, he even made the password on her computer was her brother's name, although at the moment I'm forgetting what that name was. <laughs> Otherwise, I would tell you so you didn't have to hack it. Um, so a lot of those kind of simple little details get put into the game and and uh, possibly never picked up on, but here's a few you can look at. Hopefully. So um, you'll notice as you go through the base that every single room has a purpose and it's been outfitted with, with a lot of the visual storytelling. This was a, a lot of forethought had to be put into this and one of the things we did in the process of the game of creating the DLC was we would write an environmental storytelling doc. Basically we kind of decided, okay, what is the purpose of the base? What are the purposes of every single room? And we described a lot of the things that we felt would be appropriate in a military base like this. And then we handed that off to the art team and said, here you go, have fun with it. And then the environment guys, after a bout of crying, where they have all these little extra tidbits to do in every single room, uh, well, we do manage that and just try to do stuff as cheap as possible so that we can convey, oh, you have this operation map here and there's stuff and if you read the post-its, sometimes they make sense and they relate to the story. And you have some offices where you have pictures of people and there's actually a backstory written for them and it's really for the uh, explorer. And the show don't tell of the yeah, environment. The, the, the type of player that wants to revel in those details, they're going to have their money's worth uh, with their sex typically.
So, what's the story? Just got off the horn with the commander. She says you got something for me to take a look at. Prosthetic eye, one of Burke's. We need it to get past the retinal scan, but it's useless like this. Aye. Without an active neural connection, it might as well be an expensive paperweight. <laughs> may as well put a golf stopper in front of the scanner for all the good that thing will do you. Solutions, Quinn. Think you can handle this? Lad, I may be just a mechanic, but I'm also the only thing keeping this whole bleeding facility from sinking into the abyss. Think I can manage a simple optic frequency bypass. Just let me get me tools. Right. So that's it now. You got the eye. Sorry it took a little longer than I expected. Nearly break the damn thing once or twice. New TYM firmware and such. Now don't go fucking around with it. It's only got a limited lifespan due to the temp power source I rigged. It's only good for one use. Got it? Well, hopefully this thing works. It'll work just dandy so long as you don't do something stupid like drop it. And it ain't a bloody webcam. So don't try using it to spy the knickers up someone's skirt. Access granted. Is this is... Uh, this is an elevator, of course, that's going down, and... It's one of the few times where we could actually make this very uh, directed flow of whatever happens outside of the elevator. So when you go down, you see all of this uh, animated stuff going on. There's that base, there's that submarine going on. It's all, it's all uh, planned to be awesome looking at that point. We had a similar thing planned in the first game when you were supposed to go from upper angsha to lower angsha, but it, it turned out that we had to cut upper angsha, so that awesome elevator ride got cut off in the process. So it was fun to, this time around, try to do it again here, which we think, even though it takes a bit of time to do those things, it's it's such a nice uh, visual moment just to see this, this big thing and then have the important story re reveal down there. It's really a nice way of pacing of really showcasing yeah. what we wanted to do because we did want that whole feel of you're descending into the depths of this dark secret that's happening and and that enabled us to do it and i just like to point out in case you weren't noticing when that sub left uh that was gary savage inside that sub so that kind of explains why you don't find him down in the lab Jensen, it's Keitner. Where are you? In a well-concealed elevator inside the prison's restricted wing. Your gun-running neural engineer deserves a raise. I take it the eye worked then. Good. Now listen, if what you say is true, if Burke really is using the prisoners here as lab rats, I need proof. Hard evidence that I can take to Interpol. An entire prison full of kidnapped civilians isn't enough? You're an ex-cop, Jensen. You tell me. How many death row inmates crying on about their innocence have you seen getting out? Point taken. I'll see what I can find. On the other side of that window, you see this robot arm trying to do something with those cells that needs to be cooled down or something like that. We don't quite know what it is exactly, but it's something, something technical and cool. Something to do with the secret lab. Probably something to do with this entire installation. Now, this robot arm actually took a long time to do, but it was made by Philippe Desrosiers, the lead modeler, uh, on his own time, actually, not on, not on work time. Uh, it's something that he wanted to do, he spent probably the equivalent of 20 entire days on that thing. Wow. Uh, it's actually a robot that, it's not animated, it's actually uh, a robot that plan what it's doing with our internal dynam uh, interactive system. 
It's it's like a robot done with the most complicated way possible. But it's cool, like it does stuff and you could look at it, try to do thing uh, with those batteries. Try and figure out what it's doing. Yes, and it's doing <laughs> not something really interesting in the end, but it's a really, really cool robot arms and it's cool that we could manage to do this, these animated stuff the way they are. So here we are inside a very, very important story room. This entire room was basically created to help convey the real story we wanted. We had so much we wanted to, to express here that, that this is a, a top secret research base tied with Versa Life. If you look very carefully, you might find some clues about that here. And it was really to just kind of show off a lot of what we were unable to show off in HR in the Omega Ranch facility. Um, so we wanted to really get across a lot of that idea of the of the uh, experimentation that's going on here on human experimentation. We wanted to put in all the ties to the Hyron project. In the corner you can see parts of the boss that you're actually going to fight later. And one of the really, really cool things is, is what we call those surface tables, these holographic tables. And every single one of them, if you have the right device that will activate them, they kind of even in themselves tell even more story. I think one is talking about a secret moon base that's going on. One of them is showing the locations of all the Hyron projects um, that exist in our universe and all the Panchea projects because there is more than one. Um, but all of that secret stuff that's hidden throughout this all just to basically tell this depth of story if you just spend the time looking at it. Artistically this is by far the most expensive room we've made because of all of these details. We probably have uh, there is an artist who worked exclusively on this room and the elevator ride just before for the entirety of the project, which means around 13 weeks to do all of this. Please, please don't leave me like this. No hope. So the one uh, issue for me in this lab was this was where we had to put um, our Kavanaugh, the Dr. Kavanaugh, Tiffany Kavanaugh, who's a very important character for the story. And when we were originally looking at it, I really kind of wanted her off separated in her own room because we needed to kind of have it make sense from a story perspective how you can come into this room and do whatever the heck you want and she doesn't pay any attention. So it was a bit of a challenge because mm -hmm. we had such a small space that we could work with. Yeah, one of the things that ended up happening was we ended up having uh, art constraints a little bit just on size. We couldn't make two huge story rooms. We yeah. could only really have one. There so. were also those glasses. We were supposed to enclose it in glass but it, it Transparency costs a lot to the current generation graphic cards and we couldn't there was so much stuff going on in that room that we had to get rid of that glass and yeah. Yeah, and another problem was the uh generation of chaos from the player. We couldn't have him shooting a machine gun all over the place and then you could maybe possibly kill Kavanaugh, which was also a really big no no. So we ended up taking away the holster force holster on the weapon so 
That's a little bit annoying. And then we tried to sell the fact that she doesn't see you by having her positioned her back to you and have her absorbed in her work. I always kind of wanted her to have headphones on, <laughs> like she's trying to listen to music or something. <laughs> um, but we have, uh, we hopefully sold it a bit in mm -hmm. terms of the custom animation that we created for her. So that when you actually go, she kind of jumps like she's really scared and was absorbed in her work. Yeah, so I think, I, I think it worked out. And it's interesting how much focus you have to put on something like that just to try and sell it when you know the player can do anything they want. Mm -hmm. Can't take it. me. 